You're sitting around the conference room table saying, what can we possibly make that would be taco related? Someone says, I know, let's make a cheese grater in the shape of a taco. Sometimes I would like to be at those meetings. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for more than 40 years. Today, I'm gonna try some taco gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. Try making this inside piece hollow. So it's gonna come up to here now. Make this a little bit of a depression. It's a soft rectangle. These are the products I am going to test. Tortilla press, taco toaster, jalapeno core, taco fry clip, the great taco cheese grater. Tortilla press. Okay, I've got some uh, tortilla dough right here. Going to flip this up. This surface is concave. There's nothing magic to it other than here's a hinge, here's a hinge. I'm gonna put that down, close this up, give it a bit of a press to get it started. Start pressing down. And it made a little cracking noise that I'm not that thrilled to hear. I don't want to press my luck, so to speak, because I don't want to break it because it's plastic. Let's see what we got. We have a dish-shaped tortilla. And it's okay, but it could be a lot flatter. I would also think the edges need to be trimmed. It's just kind of oozing out to the sides. I wasn't totally happy with that first one, so let's give it a second try. And this may be just slightly thinner but I would still expect this to be a little more thin. I'm gonna toast these up so we can make some tacos later. I will be back. What I've got now is some perfectly toasted tortillas. Let's try to bend this up. And that may be a function of the fact that it's a bit thicker than I would like. Too thick for a taco, it may have to turn it into a tostada, which is no problem for me. Let's see how the plastic tortilla press compares to the more classic cast iron tortilla press. And I am good to go with this. We're now toasted up and we have two taco shells that look a lot more like taco shells than the previous version. I am a happy puppy. What would I give the plastic tortilla press? Guess what? I'm giving it a one out of five. Didn't flatten the tortilla like you would want. It did not do its job at all. So typically I would test one of these using a oily left hand. I'm right-handed and that would challenge me a little bit. It's really not worth it in this case because all I'm doing is applying some downward force here. No left-handed oil test for you. For usability rating, again, one out of five, it's not very high because it doesn't give anything like the leverage you would get from a more traditional uh, uh, tortilla press. I wanna talk about tortilla press physics. So get ready, class. This is all based on levers. I'm gonna use the traditional press to explain what's happening here and why this is working. So for instance, the hinge is here. I am that far away. If I put the dough right in the middle, I have a two to one ratio. If I push there just five pounds, I am going to get 10 pounds of push here because I am halfway to the pivot point. By the time I get over here, I am super pressing this thing. It's really, really high. It can easily be a 10 to one ratio. I can easily get 50 pounds of press here, maybe more the closer I get to that hinge. That is the first lever. However, now look what I've got going here. I've got a super lever. If this ratio is 10 to one, I don't have 10 pounds of pressure here. I have 100 pounds of pressure here. And by the time I get over here, it can easily be 500 pounds of pressure. And that's why this is so effective in squashing that dough down to a flat, flat, flat tortilla. Let's compare that to plastic press. And the ratios are nothing like that. We've got a press here, which is a little bit, a uh, little more distance. And again, if we press here, we have that same two to one ratio. The contact point is here. So we are way, way, way lower in terms of the amount of mechanical advantage. We just don't have the same amount of leverage here. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this. In terms of a redesign, I don't know if I would change anything from this. This is such a beautiful classic design. So you'll see that a lot in a lot of old kitchen tools and kitchen gadgets. They've been around for decades and decades and decades, and they've been perfected over the decades. My overall buy rating for the plastic tortilla press on a one to five scale is one. You really don't want to even think about it. Taco toaster.
I have in front of me the taco toaster. It is designed to let you toast your taco in a toaster. People could probably get a little more creative with the names of these products. But let's see how effective it is. I have a plate full of tacos. I have a toaster in front of me. Let's load it up. It has a metal clip here, which allows you to thread the taco, thread the tortilla in there, drop it in so that it takes shape. And let's go down. And what I would normally try to do is shape the taco shell, place it in the toaster, and hope for the best. But it doesn't always work that well. I've also had some toaster fires. Not fires where they flame up, but enough to, for my smoke alarm to get concerned. It is taco time. Oh, you know, I got a little stuck in there, but I think we're still okay. And we seem to be toasted, although it's not as toasted as I want. Let's be fair and give it some more time. Let's try now. Oh, we are definitely toasted. And I will pop it off and it is just about self-standing. But I would say that is a pretty respectable result. Let's see how the taco toaster compares to just toasting your taco in the toaster. So in front of me is the taco toaster taco and the non-taco toasted taco. And you can see the difference is the taco toaster gave the shell a U-shape, which means it stands by itself. This is more of a V-shape, just folded in the middle. I can set up an assembly line with the taco toaster shells. Not so much this one. This is like a little construction project. Zero difference. So in terms of effectiveness, I would give this a four out of five. Again, I think it kind of closes parts of the taco off to the heat. And because of that, it was still a little floppy even after being toasted on the sides. So I know you're probably waiting for me to oil up my left hand to see how it works. But in this case, I don't think we're gonna learn anything. There's really nothing physical or challenging going on. So, oil out. In terms of usability, it's, it's pretty easy. I would make this a little bit easier to load or flip this down a little bit. Let's again give it a four out of five because there's nothing really physically difficult about doing this. So let's talk about a redesign. So one of the things I would look for is some opportunity to keep the handle cooler. Now it's got these wavy grooves in it and that would help dissipate some of the heat. I would at least experiment with the idea of what if we came out a little bit further or maybe did something a little bit differently to help people lift this out of the toaster without burning themselves. The other thing I'm wondering is that the taco in the taco toaster was exposed on the outside, but because this inside here is a solid piece of plastic, I don't think it was toasting on the inside as well as it could. So there's just no heat circulation, but I think what I would do is try, for instance, making this inside piece hollow. There's still no circulation in here. I'm not sure it's possible, but I'm not thrilled with the way that this is just closing up the inside and closing it off to heat. Uh, it does have a lot of uncleanable spaces here because of the logo, so I think I would lay that back. I don't think it has to scream taco toaster at you. Final buy rating, I already gave it a four and a four. I would also give it a four. Jalapeno Cora. This medieval looking device is not a torture device. It is a jalapeno pepper Cora, and it is designed to core jalapeno peppers. Let's see how effective it is. I have a peck of jalapeno peppers that somebody picked. I will start with pepper number one. And this has a serrated edge, which should be allowing me to cut off the top. And that was easy enough. I am going to insert and twist. And the inside should be coming out, and they do. And I'd say, except for cleaning out some of the seeds, I would say that worked pretty well. We're gonna see how coring a jalapeno pepper with the paring knife compares to the jalapeno core. That was hard to say. No, I've been spoiled. That wasn't fun at all. So in terms of effectiveness, I would give it a five out of five. The blade itself, of course, is a big factor to consider. It actually worked really well. It may not be fun with a big bucket of peppers, but with a couple of peppers, it was kind of fun to do. It is the moment we have all been waiting for, the left-handed oil test. 
I am going to make my non-dominant hand slippery, and in doing that, we're gonna see if it points out any deficiencies or areas for possible improvement. It's not the ultimate way to test the product, but it's a quick way to do it. And the trick now is I can't twist this way like I would do with my right hand. I have to twist in the opposite direction because of the way the blade is the spiral wants to go this way. So I am going to twist that way. It is okay to do that, but a little more clumsy. Let's see if I can cut the top off. Let's see if I go in the other direction, what I actually get. Actually, I'll take that back. That did work a little better than expected. In terms of usability, I would knock it down a point or two. I would give it maybe, uh, let's give it a four. A lot of products are designed to favor right-handed people, and that is just not fair. So you definitely want to think lefty-righty when you design any product, including, or maybe especially kitchen gadgets. Lefties, you have been targeted. Let's talk about a redesign. As mentioned, a large part of this is the blade itself. So far, this is doing pretty well. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna leave the blade alone at this point. The handle is a different matter because what you need to do when you're twisting is you wanna go 360 degrees so you get the entire car out. Now, you only have so much range of motion. What you really wanna do is spin this in your hand. But the shape of this is a rectangle. It's not really designed for spinning. And it even has these finger grooves, which actually mostly a mistake because not everyone's hand is gonna fit into these grooves. So let's do away with those forever. Uh, the way you spin something is with this kind of syncopated action. So spin, grab, spin, grab, spin, grab, spin, grab. So I would make this shape probably not a rectangle, but probably I'd experiment maybe with a soft oval. I would think about maybe some way to give it some friction. So as you try to spin, you're not slipping. And then in the back area, I would make that fat and round. You don't really want a rectangle back here. What you want to do is be able to spin this so it's round and it'll just be a lot more graceful. So these are, it seemed like all small improvements, but it can make the feel of this, like any tool, you want it to feel great, you want it to feel comfortable. But I think this would be uh, some improvement in usability and feel and effectiveness and maybe even make you go a little faster. My buy rating for the Jalapeno Core is a five out of five. I'm not sure there's a good alternative out there. And if you really want to start coring out your jalapenos, I would say this is the way to go. Taco fry clip. This is designed to foil the escape of your tacos filling as you fry them up. So it's taco time. Let's see how effective the taco clips are. I'm gonna build a couple of tacos. Got some pork and some cheese. I'll try not to overfill. And let's try clipping. A little hard to press and probably doesn't need that much pressure. I'm not sure the spring needs to be that tight. Clip number two, it really takes a bit of pressure to pinch this. And, oh, cheese shower. I'm gonna try to hold this in a way that I am not interacting with these actually pretty sharp corners here. And let's see if I was successful at getting the edges together. Not very, again, there's no reason for the spring to be so hard, but I think I am together. I just felt a little bit of pain from those corners. I wasn't happy about that, but I am good to start frying. So oil's up to temp. Let's fry them up. It's taco tub time. It is really bubbling. Let's see if I have tortured tacos enough. I'm gonna clean up first and then we eat. Let's unclip these tacos and give them a taste. Let's release the first taco. You don't want to wait too long because you want your tacos to be hot, hot, hot. So if you had any dreams about filling this with some sort of salsa or something else, um, they're not going to open gracefully. Let's see if I can see what's on the inside. They look pretty well cooked and pretty well melted. Could be bite time. They need salsa. Between clipping and cooking and unleashing the tacos, I've got a number of ideas on how this can be improved. So let's say you don't have a taco fry clip at home. Let's see how it compares to using tongs. I'm gonna try this. With the thought that I'm pinching this end together and gravity is gonna keep the top half in place and everyone stand back.
Now, the big disadvantage is I would have to do this twice again, which I'm not that willing to do. I would definitely go with the clip taco rather than the tong technique. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even consider the tong technique. We just needed something to compare it to. In terms of effectiveness on a one to five scale, given the fact that you want to fry your tacos, I would give this a five out of five. It did what it was supposed to do. I would typically do a, a left-handed oil test. I think I learned all I need to know from just using my right hand on this. But we are gonna rate its usability. And I would give this a two at best. So two out of five for usability. You know what, let me knock that down. I don't think there's a good excuse for having it be this difficult in terms of usability. I would give it a one out of five. So in terms of a redesign, I've got a couple of thoughts. One of the things I would do right off the bat is get rid of these sharp, sharp corners because you gotta squeeze this thing so hard and this just cuts right into your skin. You're not gonna like that. So we're gonna get rid of those sharp corners. The other thing that's rather curious about this is it has these holes here. They are backed by a double layer of metal here. So one that's gonna make cleaning a problem, you would think the reason for the holes would be so that the metal part of this would cool more quickly. So I would weaken this spring. It doesn't have to be that thick metal. And I would shorten it or at least clear these holes so that when it comes out of the hot oil, it's gonna cool faster. So it's gonna come up to here now. This is our pivot point. This is what we're gonna be squeezing. And because we're so much further away from the pivot point when we're squeezing, it's gonna be that much easier. Instead of a flat piece of metal, I would curve up the corners. It would give the same amount of force, but with less metal. Less metal means two things. It would be lighter in weight, but also it would cool faster once you get it out of the hot oil. In terms of a buy rating, if you really want to fry your tacos, I would give this a four out of five, because I don't think there's a good alternative. If you feel like you really need fried tacos in a pinch, I would go with the taco fry clip. The great taco cheese grater. In front of me is the great taco cheese grater. It is designed to grate cheese for all of your taco needs. So, let's give it a go. The teeth on this are pretty aggressive. They're not very small. What you really want to do to really save some energy is, is place the cheese grater against a solid surface. Just let your dominant hand do the work. Of course, if you have a box grater, they focus on making your left hand more stable. Speaking of box graters, look what popped up on my table a box grater. Let's see how it compares to the taco shell shape grater. I would say this is pretty good at grating cheese. For effectiveness on a one to five scale, I would give this no better than a three. I just think you have to struggle with it and that's probably being a bit generous. I'm not gonna evaluate this using a left-handed oil test. I can really tell what I need to know left here, righty. So in terms of usability, I would even go down a point and give it a two out of five. It's not that easy to grate the cheese when there's got this curve, you gotta work your way around it. Let's talk about a redesign to see if there's a way to make this great taco cheese greater, even greater. So, this one's a toughie because I wish it was cuter. I wish it had more of a reason to exist. I am wondering if this could be easier to hold in some way. I would make this a little bit of a depression so your fingers will fit into this just a little bit better and be a little more stable. Also, this is flexing quite a bit. That doesn't really help you hold this. So I think this maybe will help. In terms of a buy rating on a scale of one to five, I would give this a one. I don't even think it looks that much like a taco. It kind of stands up, but not really. So it's not something you'll display or sit in your kitchen. The great taco cheese grater, not great. What was fun about today is a lot of these products are interactive, which means we have to touch and manipulate and work with them. Because of that, we really put them to the test. And because of that, some of them work much better than others. As usual, sometimes I think people design things without really having any sense of how to make something in the kitchen. There are a couple of stayaways here, but there are a couple of things that I think you may be interested in getting.